Things are getting a lot tougher in New York City. And not only is New York City still a long way away from normal, it's actually harder to live here now than it's ever been. The latest culprit is high unemployment. Right now, New York City's unemployment is almost 8%. That's the highest in the United States. And that's because most offices are empty. Pretty much the entire city's workforce is remote, if it can be. And you see that big group over there? That's tourism. There's just not enough of that in the city right now. This is Times Square. It's tourist central, but as you can see, things are pretty quiet. But tourism, that's not something that the city itself controls. International travelers still have a tough time getting basically anywhere. It's more the unemployment. Oh. Yeah. Oh, well, we can take a picture. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's use your camera. Since most of these high rises aren't being occupied by workers, all the little restaurants and businesses, like this little cafe right here, aren't as busy as they would be. And that's gonna persist as long as remote work persists. It has to. The people who would be here eating out, having a good time, spending money, they never came here, so they're not here. Just look at how empty this Starbucks is by Times Square. This is the only place you can get coffee or go to the bathroom anywhere and it's not packed. That's like mind-blowing. There used to be lines out the door at this place. Now the main issue here is that the reopening process is still ongoing. It's been over two years and the longer that takes, the longer all of this is going to take to get back to the way that it was. And that's actually an argument that a lot of experts made when the lockdown started was that if you shut down a place like New York, it's gonna take longer for things to restart. They don't just happen that way. You can't just tell people to restructure their lives around an internet connection and a laptop and expect them to just give that up because things are back. How are you? Just this. thing that's a problem for the city is crime. It's up across the board, pretty much every category, and that's kind of frightening, especially for me. I've lived here for over 10 years, and it's getting worse, not better. There is absolutely no way that reports of crime and danger are gonna help New York City rebuild itself. Now, I personally, I'm not out in the evenings. My lifestyle doesn't particularly put me at risk. No one's tried to steal my camera yet. But just the other day, I was reading about an incident that happened in a park like this in broad daylight, and uh, that doesn't exactly make you feel good about being in a park like this in broad daylight. This is Bryant Park, by the way, and they're actually rebuilding it. You can see out here, they're redoing the whole green area. The new mayor, Adams, has said that he wants to put more time, money, and effort into New York City's parks he wants to rebuild them, wants to make them better, and he wants to do more that make New York City a friendly place for people to just hang out and be out and about. And I guess some of that is what you see taking place over here. Thing he said he's going to start getting serious on is prosecuting people who sneak in without paying. These are a terrible example. You can't sneak through them. But if you figure out how to do that, you're going to get prosecuted. I definitely think this is a step in the right direction because if people are getting in for free, it makes it more expensive for the rest of us to take the train. Now, hopefully, cracking down on who gets in here for free and who pays, that'll probably make everything safer. And maybe that'll eliminate people getting pushed or bumped onto the tracks accidentally or on purpose. Unfortunately, that's also been happening, but they're thinking of installing barriers at some of these stations to, you know, just kind of create a divider between the tracks and where people are standing. I could definitely go for some safety barriers. Now, subway ridership, it remains 
it's at 60% of what it was before the lockdown started. But one thing that I am very happy about is you don't need to buy one of these Metro cards anymore to get an unlimited transit option. I've been old school. I've been using Metro cards the entire time I've lived here. But now their tap and pay system caps you at 12 trips a week. So if you use this 12 times, everything else is free. But it's still smart enough to know if you're trying to stand here and tap it multiple times in a row to let like five or six people through, you'll have to pay for those. There's another issue that's making it even tougher for people to live here. And that has to do with the astronomical cost of living here. I was returning this leftover water to its natural habitat. People are seeing their rent go up by almost 50%. And uh, that's gonna be lousy news for anyone looking for an apartment this year because rents are just so high. It's definitely happening. And that's not a trend that's gonna subside at any point. That rental market in 2021 cleaned up all the inventory that was hanging around from the pandemic discounts that were available. Now, as a real estate agent, I should technically be celebrating this because it's like I get a raise, but since I also rent, it's a problem for me too. I'm gonna move this year as well. But I've already been looking around and I'm not happy with the prices I'm seeing. I didn't realize what a big hardware store this was. Just this guy, if you can. are the keys to one of the cheapest apartments in Manhattan. I'm supposed to go see it tomorrow. It's not down here. This is a pricey part of town. In fact, you see this building right here on the corner of Bleecker. This is clearly not a fancy building, but during the pandemic, I toured something in here and the discounted rent was $27.50. Right now they're going for over 4,000. And that's because of the location down here in Soho. So maybe I've been a little negative on New York City today, but I don't know if historically this is any different than what other people have said about this place. This has never been a forgiving, comforting environment. Oh boy, there goes the train. Oh, it's so loud. It's up there. And maybe all that this means is that New York City will continue to be one of the toughest places you could ever try to make it work. Let me know what you think and then pick something else here or here. Subscribe if you haven't. I will see you in the next video.